Our next speaker is Sue Griffith. Sue is the vice president of Ivy Tech Community College in Indianapolis. She comes from industry, but she has spent many years in workforce and academic education, specializing in aligning education to the needs of industry. So, Sue, please. Thank you, and, and thank you everyone for, for jumping on this, this important session. <clears throat> we, um, we have a goal in, in Indiana and in the United States of a fossil-free future. And so uh, what I'd like to talk about today is how we plan to get to that goal with education and energy specifically. Um, so just to, to give you some idea of where Indiana is and, and what Ivy Tech Community College is, Ivy Tech Community College is the largest singly accredited community college in the United States. We have a lot of programs in that college and a lot of schools. And my school is Advanced Manufacturing, Engineering, and Applied Science, and Energy fits into, into that school. So we have, um, as you can see where we're located, we have uh, the benefit of a great resource. Um, we're in the Midwest, but we're also in the Great Lakes region in Indiana. And so that region is, um, has access to the Great Lakes, which is one of the uh, greatest natural resources, uh, most valuable natural freshwater resources in the world. So we have four campuses that have the energy programs and they are located strategically around the state. So there are two, uh, Lake County and Valparaiso are in the northern part of the state. Lafayette's in the middle part of the state and Evansville is in the, the lower part of the state. So we have energy programs that, that are accessible um, throughout the state. And so you can see these are our energy programs and there is an increased focus on uh, photovoltaic and wind and it was great to see um, the college in the Basque region and the you know the photovoltaic installers that they're training. Uh, we have um, electric line natural gas and power plants so we still have um, some traditional fossil fuel programs and that can really give you an idea of where we are as a state and a country in our energy transformation. So our energy program graduates have certain skills and those skills are what are demanded by uh, the energy uh, companies in, in, our, in our country and in our state. And so I think most important out of these to note is um, the design and install and the design and build new systems. So we're really looking for, as we complete our energy transformation as a country, um, like Europe, we're, we're really looking for new systems. And so we're, we're trying to install that uh, or instill that uh, power or suggestion of innovation into our graduates. In addition to that, they will need to learn to collect and analyze data. Um, in, in all of our electrical generation systems, there is this data collection and, and analysis uh, to improve. And so another thing that's not on the list that we are putting into all of our programs is cybersecurity. So in other words, we, we need to teach our graduates to protect those um, generation systems from, um, from um, being, being attacked. So our energy program graduates are considered high wage, high demand. They are very valuable in the US with an average starting salary of over $27 an hour. Uh, there are 4,000 jobs open annually in, in Indiana, and they are recruited and hired by employer partners, including these. And also, interestingly, Caterpillar and Cummins, uh, they do power generation equipment, and so um, they recruit our graduates as well. We also have a lot of automotive manufacturing in Indiana. Um, it's a rural state, but, but there is a lot of automotive manufacturing and those are changing over to electric vehicle production. I know Ford and GM have both announced. We also have Fiat Chrysler in our state and they've announced and, and Honda as well and Toyota. So really the outlook for energy growth for Indiana and the region is good in renewables. 
However, coal is still king and um, roughly 66% of our Indiana power comes from coal fired plants and another 25% comes from natural gas. And that leaves only about five and five and a half, five point six coming from renewable sources. So the state's renewable portfolio um, goal uh, for 2025 is 10% of that power mix to come from renewable energy. I would say that, you know, it's 2021 and we've been set back a bit by COVID in this work. So I'm not sure we'll make that by 2025, but we certainly um, are committed to trying. And so outlook for energy and the region, um, I think, so our citizens are demanding a carbon-free, nuclear-free uh, outlook for energy. Um, you know, in the U.S., less than 40% of the power is from carbon-free generation. 60% uh, in the U.S. is from nat natural gas. And then the goal for us is still to be carbon-free by 2035. So that's going to be a very heavy lift um, for, for most of our states to get there. Um, you know, Indiana is is still is still focused on that goal. So hopefully, uh, you know, we will get there. The challenge for nuclear free for the Great Lakes region is going to be a bigger challenge. And, and I really doubt that they'll be nuclear free uh, by 2035. But again, we have the resource of the Great Lakes. And so uh, perhaps we can we can use that to compensate. So we're meeting the goal again, but slowly. Um, we are looking at what needs to come first, the educated workforce to meet the needs and the future needs of our, uh, of our employers as they get into this uh, fossil free space. Um, our growth is definitely, as you can see here in solar and wind, but we do have some coal generation power plants still left. They're closing uh, one by one and very rapidly across the state of Indiana, they are closing. Um, but interestingly enough, in our um, you know, a state that borders Indiana, the coal mines are ex exporting still, and they're exporting primarily to China. The coal in Kentucky is very valuable for um, you know for export because it is burns at such a high power that it's good for making steel. So Indiana again is a rural state. We have a lot of. Uh, grain production, we have a lot of livestock production, and now added to that are, uh, is, is wind power production. So um, we've got a lot of opportunity for our farmers to expand into wind power and the power projects are becoming more and more operational. The farms are becoming more operational. And so each utility company has got a power generation upgrade plan that they're accelerating and uh, we're continuing to uh, move to electric electric transmission upgrades. So in accelerating our carbon free power, excuse me just a second. So in accelerating our carbon free power, it's important to note that we are a manufacturing state and 30% of, excuse me. I apologize. 30% of our gross domestic product in Indiana is um, generated by manufacturing, by that sector. And 60% of the power generated in Indiana is used by our manufacturing uh, companies. And so what that means is we have to come up with a carbon-free solution that still um, keeps that, um, that sector viable and, and keeps them uh, working. So there, again, the rise of electric vehicles and electric vehicle production in Indiana um, is, is really making the, some changes in the workforce and education of the workforce. Um, we've got universities who are supporting and promoting uh, power innovation in our curriculum. And we've got companies like Duke and Nipsco who are innovating and trying to stay profitable. But I think the, the biggest effect for uh, carbon-free power in the United States and particularly in Indiana is that students are really showing a greater interest in being more socially responsible. So many of you may have heard we had a new president and with a new president comes a new plan. 
And that new plan has some of the old goals with it, but it also uh, has some of uh, new strategies to get there. So we are on track for net zero uh, emissions by 2050. And, um, you know, we're, we're forecasting economic growth and, and additional opportunities uh, that come with a clean energy and a carbon free society. So what does that mean for education? So we looked as a college and as a school, we looked at what would be the needs and the degrees for carbon free careers. And so um, we looked at our own degrees and how they would change as well. So example for automotive technology that that will look very different with the adoption of electric vehicles. And so um, so the degrees that we mapped to for our carbon free careers, you can see those. There are a couple that Ivy Tech doesn't have. Um, one of those is petroleum engineering and, and the other one is conservation and forestry. And we have other uh, education providers that that have those in our state. So what's that all mean? Well, that means that, um, you know, Indiana is going to look very different in US is going to look very different and our education for en energy careers is going to look different. So our focus again is going to be on uh, solar, it's going to be on wind and and probably some hydro. So, um, so we're looking forward to that and looking forward to uh, the great careers that uh, our graduates can have that it looks like some of our our European partners are already getting to. So thank you all very much.